So once again, I do not have any disclosures. Okay, so with this session, we're gonna review the epidemiology and staging of cervical, ovarian, endometrial, uterine, and vulvar vaginal carcinomas. Um, we're gonna review the role of PET-CT in diagnosis, staging, and treatment, as well as management of these tumors. And we're gonna review PET-CT imaging findings in typical patterns of spread and recurrence in these gynecological malignancies. So we're gonna start with um, cervical cancer. Um, although the incidence of cervical cancer has decreased over the last few decades, predominantly because of efficient screening procedures like the pap test, um, it is now estimated to be the second most commonly diagnosed cancer in women worldwide and the third most commonly, commonly diagnosed gynecological cancer um, in the United States. Um, there are 12,000 new cases and 4,000 deaths um, in the recent years, like the, the, every year at least, recent in, re, in 10 most recent years. In the West, most cases are diagnosed early with almost 50% of invasive cases detected before 35 years of age. About 10% of patients are more than 65 years old, and they're more likely to die of cervical cancer because it's not diagnosed until well advanced. So risk factors um, do include low socioeconomic class at age, uh, at age of onset, sexual activity, cigarette smoking, oral contraceptives, and HPV, of course, infection, um, mainly HPV infection. Uh, in premenopausal patients, this, their symptoms would be intramenstrual bleeding uh, or postcoital bleeding. So um, in advanced cancer, symptoms of bowel or urinary tract obstruction may be seen at presentation. The disease is staged clinically according to the FIGO staging system. Um, and, um, you know, as you can see here in stage one, the disease is basically confined to the uterus, um, to the cervix, and it confined to the uterus doesn't go outside the uterus. But stage two it extends beyond the cervix, but not into the pelvic sidewalls or, or pelvic wall or the lower one third of the vagina. In stage three, the disease extends to the pelvic wall and lower one third of the vagina and results in hydronephrosis or renal failure, like the case that Dr. Roran was showing. And of course, stage four, uh, four a is invading of the bladder, invasion of the bladder mucosa and the rectum, and extending beyond the pelvis, and 4B is distant metastases. This is a, a schematic that shows, um, you know, the, the lymph node uh, spread of cervical cancer. Lymphatic pathways of spread is, um, you know, through the external iliac and hypogastric or presacral nodes um, directly up towards the periaortic lymph nodes. Um, in advanced disease, surgical staging is preferred for the assessment of pelvic and aortic lymph node involvement. And scalene nodes can be involved and you can be seen in about up to 17% of patients um, who have aortic nodal disease. Because bone metastases occur very rarely, Bone scans are not routinely indicated um, in cervical cancer. We use bone scans only in those with bone pain. Um, CT scans um, CT scans give us high resolution anatomic detail, um, and of course they've become an important part of routine staging for cervical cancer. Um, they can stage the cervix, uterus, parametrium, adnexa very well, and distant organs, um, but um, and, and very sensitively. But again, sub-centimeter disease cannot be detected reliably with CT um, because the detection criteria are based on size. Um, and so it may lead to understaging. MRI, same thing, can predict endometrial involvement uh, up to 96% of patients um, as opposed to up to 80% by CT. And so has a high negative predictive value, but again, nodal metastases can be underestimated. Um, so P PET, therefore, was approved recently by CMS for in, in initial staging of cervical cancer. They will actually pay for one PET CT in every uh, cervical cancer patient for initial staging, locally invasive.